Once upon a time, there lived an old woman who had magical powers. Her name was Five. She was also so evil that some people called her a witch. Five hated her name. No one knows why her parents named her Number Five. When she was a child, other children would make fun of her name. Sometimes, when she was close by, they would look out the corner of her eyes and giggle as they said, Give me five. They would slap their hand with a quick handshake and burst out laughing. This taunting always made Five angry. When she grew up, Five decided to put an end to the name calling. So she created a weird spell. Anyone who says Five will drop dead, she says. Then she changed her mind. From this day on, anyone who says Five will disappear. This spell immediately caused a problem in the country. No one could say that number again without disappearing. Children could no longer recite their five times table. People had to drop the word five from their vocabulary. In five's village, the unlucky number was no longer 13. Once, a customer asked a merchant, how much is that blue t-shirt? The shirt is five. Suddenly, there was a loud swoosh before the merchant could finish his sentence. He disappeared right in front of the customer's eyes. A crafty spider named Nancy lived in Five's village. He had heard about the witch's spell. Times were very hard. Nancy was not a farmer and he had no food at all to eat. His wife and children were starving. Since Anansi was small and not a very good worker, he could only rely on his brain to get whatever he needed to survive. He said to himself, Things are tough, boy. I must make this witch's spell work for me. Anansi went to the road that led to the village marketplace. He chose a spot on the side of the road where everyone on the way to the market would have to pass. There, near a large guango tree, he decided to pile up five mounds of the rich brown soil. These mounds he called yam hills. In the top of each yam hill, he planted an African yellow yam. Then he drove a stick next to the yam on which the vine could grow. And Nancy carefully watered the yams until each one began to sprout. And Nancy made a web-like amok in the guango tree and patiently waited for someone to come by. Early one morning, after each yam shoot had poked its head out of a mount, Anansi sat down next to his yam hills. Soon, brother dog came on by his way to the market. Dog balanced a basket of sweet smelling fruit on his head as he walked down the road. Good morning, brother dog, said Anansi in a sugary voice. I know that you are busy and I feel so stupid. I am not an educated man like you. Would you help me to count how many yam hills that I have planted here? Asked Anansi. You should have gone to school to learn how to count. Brother Dog said grumpily as he walked away from Anansi towards the market. Anansi climbed up into the guango tree and waited. The next person to come by was Brother Bull. He carried a large basket of fruits on his head. Good day, Brother Bull, Anansi said in a sad voice. Could you just spare me one minute? Anansi begged. What can I do for you, Anansi? Brother Bull asked. 
I was a yicky and sickly child, so my parents did not send me to school. I never learned my ABCs. I planted all these yam hills. Can you help me to count them? Anansi said. But of course, Anansi. Brother Bull replied, You have one, two, three, four, five. Swoosh! As he said that number, Brother Bull disappeared into thin air. The basket of sweet ripe fruit that he had been carrying on his head fell to the ground. And then she snatched up the basket of fruit and rushed home to eat them all. For a long time, Anansi did very well tricking some passerby into counting his yam hills. He grew fat from all the baskets of food he had gathered. He had tricked brother turkle, owl, mongoose, hare, peeny wally the firefly and even the tough brother scorpion. Mrs. Guinea Fowl was a nice young mother of newly hatched children. She could not say no to anyone. She and her husband shared the chore of selling their produce in the village. That day, it was her turn to go to the marketplace. She loaded up her hand basket and headed to the market. As she got closer to the yam hills, Anansi was nowhere in sight. Just as she was about to pass yam hill number four, Anansi the spider lowered himself down from his perch in the guango tree. He called out in his sugary voice, Good morning, Mrs. Guinea Fowl. Could you help me with a problem? Of course, Anansi, the polite Mrs. Guinea Fowl said. I have these yam eels here and I don't know how to count. Would you help me? Please, Anansi begged. Mrs. Guinea Fowl, who had seen a Nancy trick brother scorpion walk over to the last yam hill and climbed up on top of it. She said, You have one, two, three, four, and the one I am standing on. What? What are you doing? That is not the way you count, Anansi shouted angrily. What do you mean, Anansi? Mrs. Guinea Fowl said. I don't know of any number called the one I'm standing on. Start again, Anansi ordered. Mrs. Guinea Fowl began again. You have one, two, three, four, and the one I am standing on. That is not what you are supposed to say, Anansi shouted even more angrily. Well, if you are so smart, what am I supposed to say, Mrs. Guinea Fowl asked. Anansi shouted, you are supposed to say one, two, three, four, five. Oops! Suddenly, Anansi disappeared leaving Mrs. Guinea Fowl with all the loot that he had gotten from tricking his victims.